Hey guys, this is Odon Gaming. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. So this video I want to show you something really fun, and that is the team that I'm using for Nightmare Hydra. If you're gonna hear a little bit of noise in the background, or you know, if you hear some crying, that's my baby girl because she's currently sleeping. So if she does wake up, you're gonna hear a little bit of something, and you know, I might pause and just continue this video. But the reason why I like this team so much, and I'm gonna show you like parts of it. I already have a run pre-recorded, but the reason why I like it so much is because it does some really good damage, and the fact is, it does not use enemy max hp and that's why i'm so impressed with the amount of damage that it does so the thing that i'm using it's over here yes i do have some void legendaries mythics and whatnot but still you know it's not necessarily an easy guide it's more of a team showcase for me so the team that i'm using is lady mikage then krisk seifi supreme gaelic michinaki and then we have sesia so i can even go through the team and like just let it play because this week is a is a skip week for us so I'm just gonna do the bare minimum, which you know what, let me just free regroup and see exactly what's the what's the minimum damage, because I don't want to do too much over. The the way that the Hydra Clash happens is, why did I just click start again? Okay, I didn't. So, the way the Hydra Clash pairings happen is kind of like, same way as CVC, and that is, you know, it depends on the amount of points you do, you're gonna be paired against people that do around the same amount. So, because it's a skip week, like I mentioned, we're gonna try to keep as close to minimum. So, I just need 36.6 million. So... Let me just run through you a little bit about the team, but I'm obviously going to show the builds. I'm going to show, uh, maybe because I'm just running it like this, I might just not uh, show you the other run with with the you know with the whole thing going on. But this team, I like. Uh, the reason I like it so much is because it's perfectly balanced on having the right amount of buffs and debuffs that you actually need, plus brings you a lot of survivability. And I'm not going to lie, the key to this team that made it be perfect, like before. I could do around 200 million, maybe 220 if I'm lucky, 230 max. But the addition of Lady Mikage in this team just made it be so perfect. And the reason why I like my, <laughs> my team so much is because, well, it's full auto, okay? It might have some RNG, it might not always be perfectly wonky easily. It might fail like once I saw it fail at 100 million, but I just rerun it. And this team basically does around 250 million full auto pretty consistently like there's no i don't have to click anything i just let it run and it just goes on its own and like i said the reason why it goes so good is because we have all the right buffs and debuffs in the team that keep us alive and gives us the survivability which allows us to bring enough damage on the other dps so as an example we have sifi that brings increased speed increased defense and block debuffs okay that's three good buffs but at the same time what she also brings is she also brings the third meter boost when she does a raid two? Okay, so not only the three buffs, but she also brings a little bit of third meter boost. Then obviously she also brings us a single target revive if we need it. Most of the time we don't, but if something happens and it's bad RNG, it does help out. Then the next one is Krisk, which Krisk is obviously one of the best, if not you know, if not the best at Hydro when it comes to supporting because what he brings is. A, we increase speed as well, so we have a backup increase speed. He brings a buff extension on his A2, which is on a 3 turn cooldown, and also brings that ally protection, which allows your people to stay alive and, you know, be pretty well protected. But not only that, he also brings a decrease speed on the A1, which is an AOE A1. It's not guaranteed, it's a 50-50, but still, paired with Lady Mika, I guess the ally attack is just perfect. And also, every time he gets hit, he brings increased defense and increased attack. Because of that reason, you always want to have Krisk in the second position in your team, okay? The reason for that is, if somebody hits you, the first person, like if he would be in the lead, basically everybody else would be hit with less damage because the decrease attack would already be placed. But in my case, I have Lady Mikage in the lead, that brings me the AT accuracy, and that's why I keep Lady Mikage over there, and uh, basically everybody else after that just takes less damage because of that decrease attack that lands. So he's just he's just amazing for that. Then the last one as a support is, like I said, Lady Mikage. The amazing thing that Lady Mikage brings, and I'm not even swapping forms with her. She brings us the increase the increase attack, increased crit damage, ally attack, and at the same time this one that you just, just saw the A2 brings buff extension, which means between her buff extension on the A2 and Krisk's buff extension on the A2, you pretty much, as you can see, you pretty much have the buffs up almost all the time, okay? I just made Krisk and Lady Mika gave prioritize those two skills. So there's there's the right amount of buffs, there's enough protection, without a protection that you should not worry too much about getting damage, which allows me 
to have 3 DPS, like just straight up build for damage. You don't have to worry about getting enough survivability for my uh, special, like, you know, Supreme Gaelic and Cecia because they're a bit squishy. But we having the ally protection, increased defense, all the extension just makes it be perfect. Now, when it comes to DPS, Supreme Gaelic is amazing. He's one of my favorite ones because he brings block buffs, decreased speed if they have more than 50% turn meter, and uh, AOE HP burn. So all of those ones on the A3, which is magnificent. Then on the A2, he activates HP burns and also puts increased attack. And then he has a passive where every time there's a control effect landing on him, he, f he cleanses that control, fully heals, and then gets an extra turn. So that makes it amazing against the Head of Torment. Oh yeah, and uh, another thing I forgot to mention about my supports. Safi and Lady Mika are kind of my way of dealing with the Head of Torment. You see that I have no Perfect Veil, I have no Shamel, so obviously the Head of Torment can be tricky, but Safi has a passive that every time an ally gets a turn, there's a 50-50% chance that she's gonna cleanse that one. And at the same time, when Lady Mika gets the A2, she reduces duration of, of uh, debuffs by one turn. So obviously if we have that, uh, that true fear on us, it just gets cleansed. So back to the DPS, I like Sissy a lot because she brings again A HP burn on the A2, on the A3, but on the A2, instant activates HP burns and lands A we decrease defense and weaken, which obviously is amazing when it comes to damage. And then the last one, which is gonna be Michinaki, which well he's actually the main event when it comes to damage because he lands the hex, he can remove buffs, and then at the same time he puts decreased defense on everyone and decreased attack if they are under hex, plus that passive, as you can see, cursor of uh, whatever it's called, uh, death, whatever, he he always has a chance, he has a 50-50% chance to join the attack and just do some solid damage. Plus, being in the same team with Lady Mikage, every time Lady Mikage does, uh, does an A1, he will join and do that A1 damage, and that's just massive. You see there, boom, join the attack, and that's... This team does some amazing damage. Like I said, I'm just gonna stop it at 36.6, but I'm gonna show you the damage that this team has done because I have it saved uh, somewhere here. Let me just find it. It might be a bit bright because I have my baby girl as a desktop picture, but if I don't find it over here, I'm just gonna go in at Discord and I'm gonna show you because the damage is, uh, it's pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. The damage is pretty fun. It's pretty amazing. And it's just more than expected. That, that's the thing. It's more than actually expected. I uh, usually expect around 200, 250. And like I said, especially without having any, uh, what's it called? Having any enemy max HP on Nightmare, where, you know, when it comes to Brutal and Nightmare, you do more damage when you have enemy max HP DPS. Let's, let's stop this one. I hit the 36.6. You can see six minutes in, top chest. But you can already see that Michinaki is going to be the top damage dealer a little bit from Lady Mikage. However, let me show you the best that I did with this one. And I am going to say it from now. I did this damage. I basically was at 260 or 80. I think it was 280. I was at 280 million. Full auto. But then I just took control of it towards the end. So the last 10-15 minutes. And I got to 361 million damage. This is just amazing. Like I'm so happy with this team. It does such a good job. And... Like, I'm not sure who I would replace. Like, maybe if I got somebody that's better, like if I had an Acrisia, I might drop Cecia, or, or who knows. But when it comes to survivability, these three do an amazing job. Now, let's just uh, keep this key, because it was right 36.6. Let me quickly show you. First of all, let me show you the preset, and then I'm going to show you the build. So, when it comes to presets, I turned off the Metamorph from Lady Mikage. Then I made the Ropa with the ally attack, and then prioritized the A2. He just wanted to keep extending the buffs, decreasing the duration of the buffs, and then increasing the duration of buffs. And, uh, you know, so basically she increases your buffs, decreases enemy buffs, uh, decreases your debuffs, increases enemy debuffs. So that allows also the debuffs to be out there. So she's just amazing for that. And, you know, she's just, she's just awesome. I just love the fact that she is one of the permanent fusions as a mythic. Then Krisk, first prior to the A3, then the A2. It's basically the both on a three-turn cooldown, so she, he's going to rotate that one pretty fast. Then Safi, first priority the revive, second priority the A2. I want to emphasize on some of these ones. If you see me have set priority, make sure you do that because sometimes I saw that Safi does not use the A2. If you, I think if you have the increased speeds up on everybody, she doesn't use the A2. You still want that to be cast, so you get the turn meter boost and you get those buffs refreshed, so keep that in mind. Supreme Gaelic, same principle, first priority the A3, second priority the A2. Cecia, first priority day 2 because she's slower than Supreme Gaelic, so she activates those ones. And plus, you wanted to keep activating HP burn and also landing the decreased defense and weaken a lot so you can do more damage. Then the second priority day 3 And then Michinaki, first priority the A3, which removes buffs and lands hex. And then second priority the A2, 
which lands decreased defense and decreased attack if there's hex out there. Now let me show you the builds. Uh, they're not gonna be easy. Again, this is you know it's it's my end game account. I've been playing for almost five years, so you're gonna see some pretty solid builds, but they're not perfectly optimized for Hydra, some of them. As an example, Lady Mikage I just have built for my Fire Knight team in six piece protection, which basically gives her 50% chance to place protected buffs. She's really fast, 368. Let me just show you with Hydra, for example. So she's 380 speed, almost 100% crit rate, some accuracy for other areas of the game, like for example, user in Arena as well, and then just some survivability and a runner with Warmaster and down the support tree. Sifi, she's basically in a six piece protection again. I'm just waiting on one more amulet. I need an amulet in order to get to the nine piece and then I'm just gonna love it. But basically this is my arena build on her as fast as I could get her. She's 374, but with the Hydro Battle, she's 386. And then these are her masteries. Again, this is most, she's mostly built for arena, but still viable in the Hydra. Now, when it comes to Krisk, I have him in a curse set. Curse set is amazing to have as another backup a person that lands hex. We already have Michinaki that can land it, but he can weak it because he's not void. That's where Chris comes in with the uh, hex set because AV on day one, AV on day two. If you want to bring the curse set to land hex on people, usually try to get it on somebody who has AV head. So, like him, Lady of Vestix is another good example that can do that. He's running at, uh, he's also Mischief Tank, I forgot to mention. So, he's also Mischief Tank, 500 resist, 400 accuracy pretty fast and then as much survivability as I could get him. I would like, you know, soft slot to be around 300 speed and then survivability as much as you can get. I do even have him in Warmaster. If you cannot hit the resistance and the accuracy needs, you don't have to take Warmaster, just go down the defense tree, for example, and grab resistance or grab Eagle Eye from the uh, support tree in order to hit those thresholds, okay? Because on Nightmare Hydra, if you want to resist debuffs, you need f around 500 resist and in order to land accuracy you need around, uh, to land your debuffs you need 380 400 accuracy you also do see that i have lightning cage this is really important this is one of the best masteries for if not actually the best uh, awakening for your mischief tank because this one counts as an extra buff so if you take this one every time they boost the termit or get a buff which includes them being respawned he gets one lightning orb and that's an another buff which means Krisk is gonna be my mischief tech like 99% of the time <clears throat> but yeah oh yeah and I also gave him a blood shield ring because again another chance at another buff so you know every little thing helps and it's it matters keep that in mind now when it comes to supreme gaelic i have him in a damage build with some uh, refresh accessories he's running at 237 with the hydro buffs almost 250 speed 100% crit rate good crit damage good attack and then the accuracy to land his debuffs i run him in war master and then on the support tree then sisia uh i actually had her in the damage build but i noticed it helps me more to have sisia in a reflex set <coughs> because that means she's gonna come back to the a2 faster activating hp burns and landing decreased defense and weaken more often so that's why i've already in a reflex again two pieces of refresh accessories and then just full on damage as much as i could 249 speed, 100% crit rate, 5.3k attack, 238 crit damage, and then 289 accuracy. Keep in mind, I only have 289 accuracy, but I do have Lady Mikage as a lead, which gives me another 80, so that means we're just fine. Warmaster over here, and then a support tree, and then the main event, Michinaki. He's in a lethal gear, no refresh on him. The stats that he has are 242 speed, 100% crit rate, 5.8k defense, 246 crit damage, and 385 accuracy. So I could lower the accuracy for everybody to be around 300 because you have the 80 lead from Lady Mikage, okay? So that, that's definitely what matters. And then uh, Warmaster again, then on the support tree. But yeah, I guess this is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this team. Like I said, I'm really happy about this one. I'm also going to make another video uh, one of these days where I'm going to show you my best team, which is, you know, uh, a normal team that actually did the... Tranda cheese team. I'm gonna show you this one, explain this one. It's not perfectly tuned. The only one which are which is specific, the only one that's specifically built for this is Tranda and Vestix. Apart from that, everybody's built for other areas of the game. But anyway, that's gonna be for another video. So yeah, I guess this is gonna be it for today, guys. Thank you all for watching. As always, if you do enjoy my content, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next, and I'm gonna see you on the next one. Peace, love, take care, run. Bye guys.